Hello, my sexy muffins, and welcome back to another video. For those who were worried about me from the Alistair video of my mania butt last night, uh, I got sleep. I got over eight hours. I am recharged. It is 11.30 at night. I slept last night. I will be sleeping tonight if I can. It all depends. We shall see. But I did get my slap. I got my beautiful slap. Anyways, on to the video. The video of this is you, the listener, being in the role of Aurora uh, Lucille Morningstar, which is the gender-bent version of, of Lucifer Morningstar. Basically, if Lucifer was into a female form of his her angel form. And if you want information on what this is about in your lore and stuff, I have a video made. It will be linked somewhere here at the beginning of the video or somewhere at the end of the video for you in the end cards and stuff for you to check out that so you know what's going on and all on the origin of your name, Aurora. But for those who do not know, Lucifer's name is like light bring it, morning star, all that. So we used Aurora, like Aurora Borealis. Uh, Aurora Borealis. I can't say it. Sorry that I butchered it. But yes, you are the Northern Lights, basically, which is a part of the shtick thing of Morning Star and such. So that is very good. Now let's get on to business. Disclaimer: This is a reverse harem in which. Uh, it's like a harem, but where all the other people are interested in one single person. And it's not their harem, but everyone's interested in that person. All the ones that are interested will be adults and not that. It's basically main characters and stuff. Becky and Charlie are not Yandere's in this. They are the ones that are excluded. So that you know. But... Let's do this disclaimer. Disclaimer. Anyone that is depicted as Yandere's in this is not Yandere in canon. This is just for fun and not to be taken seriously at all. Simbin for fictional characters and Yandere's is fine. And shipping them is fine as well. Just do not be illegal or gross about it. Uh, Yandere's are not ideal partners to have in real life and all that good stuff. And it, remember to separate fiction from reality and head canon from canon. And all that good stuff. I will refer to you as you as much as possible in this. But if I do use your name, I most likely will use the name Aurora. So just so that you know that. Anyways, let's do this. Dis uh, I already did disclaimer. Sorry, brain fart. Anyways, let's do this. This episode, aka the intro, is where Charlie figures out that her mom, uh, Aurora Lucille Morningstar's, had adult fun time with Adam, the first man, and that, well, uh, well, that he's her father. So, anyways, let's do this. If you want more information on that, you will figure out in this video or in the next one or in the previous one. Anyways, let's do this. Charlie was singing her song, running down the street, that she was finally going to have a happy day in hell. She was so over the moon. She was being able to speak to the leader of the exorcist. Her mom, Aurora, didn't want to deal with him. She did not know why, but she chose to let Charlie go and see Adam first. Charlie did not know who the leader of the exorcist was, so this was going to be a little bit messy. Aurora hoped that Adam could behave. Charlie rushes in and signs her name. Well, that's a little bit weird, she says, and then the door opens and she walks in. She walks in to see Adam, and he has ribs and stuff. Hey, Tuts, he says, you're almost as hot as your mom, she says, and uh, 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 pfft, and Charlie's face goes pale at that. Uh, was he referring to his, your, which mom was he referring to? She did not know. She walks in and takes a seat down and tries her best to do the business. And it did not go as she planned. As Adam breaks out in the song saying hell is forever and all that stuff. I'm skipping a lot of stuff for copyright reasons. I apologize. He then gets in her face. And guess what, kiddo? I'm your daddy. Oh, God, that sounded so wrong. Charlie's eyes widen. What the hell do you mean? Well, you know how you and your mom, a.k.a. Aurora, uh, have a strained relationship. 
that's probably because of the contract she signed with Heaven Above, he says, smirking, and Charlie's felt her face pale even more. You see, I wanted to see my sweet Aurora. What do you mean, your Aurora? Well, in our contract, we get regular uh, frickins. We get to frick on the regular every few decades, and that is where you were conceived. Charlie felt disgust in her stomach and paled as this was said. And that means I'm your daddy, and we are going to be coming back in six months to destroy your sweet little hotel. Tell you mommy that I said hi. And he shoves her out. Charlie was in shock and disgust, and the first thing she did was call her mom. Aurora picked up instantly, sensing something bad in the air. Hey, Charlie, are you okay? Mom, mom. Charlie says firmly, why is Adam my father? She says, and Aurora pales. You pale so hard, you had no idea what was going on with that. He told you, you ask, shaken a bit. Yes, he told me. What does he mean that he's my father? I'll come down to the hotel. Uh, I'll be right there. And with that... Charlie went back to the hotel and waited out front of it. You appeared shortly after with your driver letting you out. Hey, Charlie! You say, strained. you had not the best relationship with your daughter ever since Lilith separated you two, and you guys just weren't as close as you were when she was a kid. Mom, why? Why is Adam my father? Well, with the legal contract of having them come down for exterminations, I have to do what I have to do with him every few decades. And one time, well, you know, condoms weren't always a thing, and I'm surprised I didn't end up pregnant more often with him. Charlie's eyes widened, so he was telling the truth. Yes, he was, Charlie. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I just didn't want you, have, you to have anything to do with your father. Why didn't you tell me, though? I told you just now, sweetie. I I promise I'll make this right. I figured out what Adam plans to do. He sent me a message gloating about it. What do you mean you're going to? I'm going to help you with your hotel. I'll do whatever I can. I'll even try to get in contact with Heaven if I can. But I we just got to do this together. I promise I will help you, though. I'm not going to let that overgrown piece of poo hurt you or your hotel. I promise, Charlie, I'll be a better mom. You say to her and she nods her head. You hug each other out and then walk into the hotel just as they were watching the commercial. What the hell was that? Baggy says and then they all turn to her. You recognize Baggy instantly. She was a fallen exorcist. You didn't say anything, but you could tell and sense that she was a fallen angel, just like yourself. You didn't say anything, and Charlie began to introduce you to the hotel guests. Uh, Dad, this is my girlfriend, Maggie. Uh, hey there, Maggie. Come here. Give me a hug. You hug her and make sure that she didn't have any weapons on her, just in case. Uh, nice to meet you, ma'am. Uh, Maggie says, feeling a bit awkward, and you nodded. It's nice to meet you too, Maggie. I hope that we can get along, you tell her. She nods her head and you were introduced to the rest. Angel Dust felt weird about you. And Alistair, well, let's just say he had some territorial issues with you. My, my, you are much shorter in person. Yeah, uh, Charlie, who is this? You asked, pointing to the radio demon. Ah, uh, this is the radio demon, Alistair. He helps manages the hotel. Oh, Alistair. It's so pleasant to meet you. You stretch a smile. You felt very intense te tension with Alistair, and you didn't want him anywhere near your daughter. You felt like he was going to be doing something mischievous to her, at the very least, if not malicious. Uh, so you are the queen of hell. My, my, Alistair says and takes your hand and kisses your, the back of your hand and you snatch it away. You are a feisty little thing, he says, a little minx. 
Don't even start, you say, pointing at him. And Charlie, I want you to stay far away from the radio demon, you say, and pull your daughter behind you, glaring at him. Oh, is a little is someone a little mama's bear? You growled at him and point your finger in his face. Look here, Mr. Radio Demon. I don't trust you and I don't like you. And you're staying the hell away from my daughter. You might have her fooled, but you don't have me fooled, you say, pointing at him. Of course, of course, he moves your finger out of his face as you are pointing it in his face. I'll just have to win you over then. Anyways, I have made jambalaya. Anyone hungry? You sigh and follow him, but you had a really bad feeling about him. You got introduced to the rest of them during dinner, and Husk was very unimpressed, and Nifty was very much staring at you intensely, and that was pretty much it. It was going to be a wild ride, but you did not trust Alistair. You feel like an overlord, even if they were out of the game for seven years, had some nefarious plans, especially if it involved your sweet little girl. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this. There was just too many characters to do, to do this. If you want me to do such and such with a video of her spending time with each individual character to get to know them and develop their relationships, we can do that throughout this. If there's anything you want to see, like little scenarios or plugins that you want to see between now and throughout the series as we slowly follow the plot, comment below, and I will do my best to do it. Yes, I did try not to say the plot word for word because I didn't want to get copyright strike by taking the whole plot of the show and getting it copyright, basically. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this, and if you would like to see more, comment below what you would like to see, any specific scenarios or characters you want her to do with. Also, this will not follow the plot fully, as I have said, because it will have Lucifer and AKA you, AKA you in it before Dead Beat Dad episode. So, anyways, let's do this. Now, oh, Patreon outro. Patreon outro. Thank you, Gav, for being my current patron. You are wonderful, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. Thank you, Gav. And I hope that you all enjoyed. And now, stay sexy, all my sexy muffins. Bye bye. <laughs> Secret outro time, secret outro time, secret, 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 secret outro time, secret outro, secret outro, secret outro of a baseball bat. Welcome to the secret outro, and the secret outro question of the day is, if you were in this situation and Charlie was your daughter, how would you feel about it, and would you have you decided to help her right away, or would you have stayed out of it in that situation? Comment, comment below, and stay sexy, all my sexy muffins. Bye-bye.